AQA A-Level Physics. This video is about scalars and vectors. Now, this chunk of the specification is quite big, so I'm going to do it over two videos. Uh, start with real basic stuff, but it's going to get more complicated, don't worry. So this chunk of the specification, first half in this video, next video the second half. So force is a vector quantity, mass is a scalar quantity. What's the difference between a vector and a scalar? And basically a vector has direction. So a force, this 12 Newton force is going to the left horizontally. Uh, mass doesn't have direction, it just has magnitude. Yeah, 400 grams. It's not 400 grams up or down or east or west. It's just 400 grams, full stop. Uh, vectors can be represented with an arrow. So here's another couple of vectors for you. Um, consider this, Fred goes for a walk from A to B and it takes him 200 seconds. Uh, the distance traveled is 200 meters uh, and his, his average speed is one meter per second and distance and speed are scalar quantities because we're not worried about the direction Fred's all over the place so he travels 200 meters in no particular direction his average speed is one meter per second now his displacement at the end of the journey is a hundred meters east okay that's the, the distance in a particular direction. So from A to B, for this particular journey, uh, displacement is a vector and it is 100 meters east. And his average velocity is 0.5 meters per second east because velocity is also a vector. Distance and speed are scalars, displacement and velocity are vectors. Now, we can add vectors together to find the resultant. The resultant is what you get when you add vectors together. And so you start with the components, the things that you add together. Uh, and if these components are all in the same direction or in opposite directions, this is dead easy. So 7 plus 3, the resultant is 10. Uh, 50 minus 30. The resultant is 20 meters per second. Now, I could have said instead of 30 meters per second, I could have called it minus 30. But the direction, look at the arrow, that tells you that it's in the opposite direction. And then 6 plus 12 minus 14, uh, I believe, is 4 meters. So you add the components together to get the resultant. If everything is in the same direction, piece of cake. OK, notice also that I've drawn the arrows approximately to scale. Uh, in other words, the length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the vector. OK, so you can draw these vector arrows on a vector diagram. You can draw them to scale. So what is the resultant of these two vectors? And OK, now a couple of ways of doing it. The, the, the top right diagram, we complete the rectangle. So these two vectors are at right angles to each other. So we complete the rectangle, draw the rectangle, and then the resultant is the diagonal. Now, basically, it's the same method, but it's a, a different way of thinking about it. And more useful, actually, if there's more than two vectors, is you add the vectors, literally add them tip to toe. So there's the 40, and then after the 40, there's the 30, and then the resultant is the equivalent vector. It's the one vector which does the same thing as those two. Yeah, the resultant is the equivalent vector. OK, once we have this, because they're at right angles, we can use Pythagoras. 
So r squared will be 30 squared plus 40 squared, and theta will be 10 to the minus 1 of uh, 30 over 40. So Pythagoras and a bit of trig, we can find r and theta. Here's a simple little question for you to have a go at. A hiker walks three kilometers north, seven kilometers east, and then another two kilometers north. What will his displacement after this journey be? And I'll show you my answer in three, two, one. Okay, so I've drawn a, a vector diagram. Uh, and looking at the vector diagram, uh, it should be obvious r squared will be 5 squared plus 7 squared and theta will be 10 to the minus 1 of 5 over 7. So when vectors are in the same direction or opposite directions or if vectors are all at right angles to each other, piece of cake adding them together. Now consider this, this is the opposite of adding vectors together. This is called resolving, okay? The resolution of vectors, resolving vectors. What two forces in the X and Y directions would give you that resultant? So if you had a force in the X direction and a force in the Y direction and you added them together, what two forces would give you that? Well, consider this diagram. What we do is we resolve our vector, call it F. It doesn't have to be force, by the way, it can be any vector, but we can resolve our vector into its X and Y components. And the X and Y components in the X direction, we'll call it FX, and in the Y direction, we will call it FY. So FX plus FY would give you F, okay? Uh, and then, okay, so resolving a vector its components is the opposite of adding perpendicular vectors together. So the question is, what is Fx and what is Fy? How do you work it out? Well, a bit of trig, you should figure out that, although you don't need to figure it out, just learn that Fx is going to be F cos theta and Fy is F sine theta. I know that some students, and I remember when I was, you know, a, a student many, many, many years ago, is it sine or is it cos? The way that I remember it is that if the angle is between the vector and the direction that you're interested in, then it's cos. And then if it isn't, then it's sine. Okay. You'll understand a bit more what I mean later on, but Fx on this diagram, Fx is F cos theta, okay? Because the x direction, theta is between the x direction and F, so it's cos, and then Fx, Fy is sine. Here's a couple of uh, questions for you to have a go at. Uh, suggest you pause the video, pen and paper, and have a go at them. And the answers are, if I get a pen, so a child pulls a sled with a force of 70 newtons. So we have um, 70 newtons, okay, which is at an angle of 30 degrees. And we want the horizontal component, which is there. So the angle is there, so it's cos. So it's going to be the horizontal component will be 70 cos 30. And that's the answer. Uh, the next one, a pilot aims north, but is blown off course by a wind from the west. Uh, as a result, it travels at 175 meters per second, 10 degrees off course. Calculate the speed of the wind. So, uh, there's my vector diagram. So the pilot's aiming north, but the wind is blowing the pilot off course, the plane off course. So looking at this diagram here, uh, this angle here is 10 degrees. Okay, so my vector 
is at the top there or you can say well it's down there so the speed of the wind let's call it v is going to be 175 sine or cos sine or cos well the angle isn't there so it's sine 10 and you can work it out for yourself okay now this is a trickier one it's the last slide in the video uh, a skier of weight 750 newtons goes down the slope at a steady speed uh, the slope is at 15 degrees to the horizontal calculate the component of his weight that acts down the slope if you think you can do it pause the video have a go at it I'll show you my answer three two one okay now the important thing here is that you don't have to resolve in the x and y direction you don't have to resolve vertically and horizontally uh, as long as the two directions are perpendicular so here we have w is the weight of the skier and i'm resolving w into its components down the slope so its component down the slope is here and its component into the slope is here and looking where the angle is then the component down the slope will be w sine theta so w sine theta which is 194 newtons in the next video lots and lots about forces and we're going to be resolving forces it's going to be great.